How's it going everyone? I'm Adam Molina. Libertone is a fairly new audio company that was only founded back in 2009. Since then, they've had a couple of good products that have received some great reviews. So when we got a chance to check out the Libertone Zip wireless speaker, we knew we had to see what all the hype was about. Does it sound good? Yes, it does. Are there issues with it? Yes, there are. The box is a giant cylinder, and inside you'll get an equally large cylindrical speaker. Next come the instructions in English, Spanish, and even French. Digging in deeper, you'll find the power adapter and its corresponding wall adapter. It's covered in a soft fabric that looks and feels nice, but it doesn't seem like it provides too much protection, so this should go without saying, but try not to drop it. What isn't covered in fabric, which is basically the top and the bottom, is a hard white plastic, and this is where you'll find all the buttons and inputs, though admittedly, Libertone did a good job at keeping it down to a minimum. On the bottom, you'll find the power button, power input, 3.5mm input, and a USB output. Up top, you'll only find a single touch sensitive button, pad, thing, that has a bunch of controls baked in. Overall, it's a clever way to keep buttons down to a minimum without skimping out on functionality. Towards the bottom half of the speaker, you'll see where the zip gets its name. The fabric covering is actually a sleeve that you can swap out for any color Libertone sells. They say that you can do it in seconds, but in practice, it's a bit more of a hassle. Still, it's good to know that if you ever get tired of the color, you can just swap it out for another one. When you take the size and Wi-Fi connectivity into account, this is clearly a speaker built for the home. So if you want something that's easier to carry around, you might want to go with the Libertone Zip Mini for $50 less, though it's still not the most portable speaker you can get. Both models do come with a nifty little leather strap, so you can at least pick them up and move them around the house easily. If there was anything that the Zip was lacking in terms of build and design, it makes up for it with connections. You can connect to it with Bluetooth, AirPlay, DLNA, or Spotify Connect. Bluetooth was strong up to around 25 feet, but after that it did tend to get a little spotty. That wasn't the case at all when I was connected to Wi-Fi, which worked perfectly regardless of where I was in the house. To do that, you have to download the Libertone app and go through the setup process. Through the app, you can do things like control the volume, switch between tracks, create custom soundscapes, choose your preferred EQ profiles, check the status of your speaker's battery life, connect to and control multiple zip speakers, and even listen to FM radio and choose 5 presets. Needless to say, you can easily get lost in the app, but thankfully it has a fairly straightforward interface that streamlines the process. Still, it's a lot to take in at first. Once you're done setting everything up in the app, you can move on to the speaker. The touch sensitive interface up top lights up and though some of the controls are intuitive, like the controls to skip between tracks, the other ones might throw you off. At the top of the interface is a small circle with some lines running through it called the sound space link button. This icon's only job is to connect multiple zips together, so if you only have one speaker, it's pretty much useless. The illuminated bird icon in the middle lets you pause or play music and also doubles as the pairing button if you hold it down, while the heart icon at the bottom is where your radio station presets get saved after you set them up in the app. If you're nowhere near your phone for whatever reason, you can slide your finger counterclockwise or clockwise on the touch interface to raise or lower the volume. It's pretty cool. Another feature that's more useful than I initially thought it was going to be is something that Libertone calls Hush. Covering the touch interface with your hand temporarily fades the music to silence if you have to do something like answer a quick question where pausing the music completely isn't really necessary. One thing that I did notice was a 1 or 2 second lag between pressing an icon and the action actually occurring when connected to Wi-Fi. That lag got annoying quickly and usually resulted in me pressing the interface again and skipping past songs. I also wish the sensitivity was a little stronger on the touchpad since I found myself on more than one occasion thinking that I had pressed the button and waiting for something to happen before realizing that it didn't take. The Ritone claims that the battery life of the Zip is about 10 hours, though keep in mind that that's sure to be slightly shorter if you're charging any of your devices, or if you tend to listen to your music on max volume like I do. In our testing, we got about 7.5 hours at max volume, which isn't the greatest, but at least the app gives you a pretty accurate estimate of how long you have until you need to recharge the speaker, so at least it won't be caught by surprise. We did all of our testing wirelessly, switching between Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Of course, you can hardwire something like an iPod Classic in thanks to the 3.5mm input, but we figured those cases are probably few and far between. The bass on the zip is a little strong, but in a good way. Normally, a strong low end tends to bleed into the lower mids, but that's not the case here. The rolling drums and Strawberry Swing by Coldplay worked their way beautifully through the song, staying underneath everything that was going on. The mids had a few different things going on, some that I liked and some that I didn't. Vocals consistently sounded great, and most background instruments kept a good amount of their detail but they all sounded sort of narrow and squished together. Spacing between song elements wasn't as impressive as I thought they would be, considering the decent size of the speaker. A good example of this was in Tighten Up by the Black Keys, where guitars and vocals all sounded great, but kind of cramped. 
There wasn't any harshness to speak of in the highs even when on max volume, which was surprising to me considering how loud this speaker gets. Guitar slides in Mayhem is Beautiful by Bushwalla had a good amount of detail and were never piercing. If you can't tell by now, we were pretty impressed with the sound quality of the zip, but features that are supposed to make it easier to use end up making it a little bit more cumbersome to use. Don't get me wrong, the app has plenty of functionality and the touchpad is cool, but the low sensitivity of the touchpad and the lag over Wi-Fi just get really annoying. At $300, this isn't a cheap speaker, so if you want something purely for home audio, you're probably better off with something from Sonos. That said, if you want to just pick up that same speaker and leave the house, this one's by default because it has Bluetooth. In the end though, I just want my speaker to sound good, and the zip does, so we're giving it an 8 out of 10. And that's it for our review of the Libertone Zip, thanks for watching. If you want to know more about this particular speaker, you can check out the full written review over at soundguys.com. While you're here, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already, and sign up to our monthly newsletter so you can stay up to date with all the newest reviews and audio news here at SoundGuys. That's also where we do our monthly giveaways, so you might want to do that. Links to all of that down there in the description. By the way, if you like the new look, hit the like button. I'm Adam Molina. I'll see you later.